the state versus props topic is a great conversation starter in all React interviews. On one hand, it gives the interviewer a chance to very quickly evaluate your understanding of React basics and decide what's the general level of expertise you have on the whole topic. On the other hand, based on your answers, it opens a lot of doors to various React topics such as state management, dependency arrays, rendering and much more. In this video, we'll go through the basics of component state and properties in React and then we'll explore some of the more complex concepts built on top of them. The video is part of a free React tutorial, so make sure to check the description to find more about this series. We'll start by reviewing the state and the props in an actual example. This member card component receives a member ID and an onclick event handler as properties. Think of these values as read only inside the component. They can be observed, passed down to other child components, or rendered to the DOM, but they cannot be modified inside the receiving component. Inside the useEffect hook, we are using that member ID property to fetch more member data from the server. The received data is stored in the component state. Since we are using functional components, the use state hook is used to declare state values. Remember that you always need to use the provided setters when updating the state. I mentioned that properties can be observed. In the use effect dependency array, we added the ID property. This means that whenever the parent component will change the value of the ID, the logic inside the use effect will be executed again. This mechanism allows you to react accordingly whenever data inside your component changes. Let's look at some actual code. In our example, we'll be working on three nested components and we'll observe in detail how they exchange data and request changes. First, I define the wrapper component which has a state property called value. We are able to increase this value by one when clicking on the header button. We are also rendering inside here another component called parent. The parent component also has its own state value which can be incremented. Finally, the parent component passes the wrapper value and the parent value to the child component, which renders all these values in the DOM. Notice that the state of one parent component is passed down to a child component as properties. To reiterate, a component can change its own state, but it cannot change its props. Changing these values is extremely important because they trigger the React rendering process, but we'll get back to this in a second. For now, let's take a look at the following two scenarios. How can a parent component change the state of its child components, and how can a child component component can change the state of a parent component. So, a child component state can change whenever a property received from its parent is updated. In our example, the state value of the parent is passed to the child by the name parent value. In the child, we can declare a use effect hook and define the parent value property in the dependency array. Then, as mentioned, when React detects a value change in the property, the function callback inside the hook will be run again. What we can do then is to update the child state accordingly. One interesting scenario I want to look at here is the case when you need to use the component's internal state in such a hook. For instance, we'll increase the state value with 1 whenever we detect the property change. This works as expected, but notice that a warning popped up in the code. Long story short, you are encouraged to declare into the dependency array any state value or property used inside the hook. This is needed in order to avoid stale callbacks and potential bugs. By following the compiler suggestion and adding the value inside the dependency array, we'll run into an infinite loop. This is because the hook is updating the value and then the callback is triggered again when the value update is detected. It's extremely easy to fix this since the state set value setter also accepts a function as an argument and we can use that value instead of the one from the component context. However, this should show you how easily things can go wrong if you don't work carefully with observed values. Next, let's look at the opposite situation. Is there a way for child components to modify the parent state? Because of the unidirectional architecture of React, the only solution for such a scenario is for the parent component to pass down to the child functions as properties. This way, the child can call the function at any time and the state of the parent might change accordingly. In our example, we are defining a function called clear in the parent component, which resets its internal state value to zero. This function is passed down to the child component and we can easily call it from there by clicking the clear parent button. You might seek out examples where any function declared in a component is wrapped around the use callback hook. The reasoning behind this is that whenever a render happens, the function components are executed again and all the internal functions, such as the clear function in our example, are being redeclared. Such redeclarations might trigger other renders in the child components if those functions were passed to them as props. Keep in mind, however, that use callbacks come with some overhead, so for small, inline functions, such as our clear method, it's probably more efficient to just live with the cost of the function being redeclared. Let's also take a quick look at the rendering process. I added a console log as the first line of each of the functional component, so we can easily see when the component's logic is re-executed. In the debugger console, you'll notice that a child component render is being executed each time its state value is increased. 
Increasing the state value of the parent component will trigger one render for the parent but two renders for the child. One of the renders is caused by the property change and the second render is caused by the internal state value update in the use effect hook. As you'd expect, updating the state value of the wrapper component will trigger renders for the entire component chain. And finally, clearing the parent state from the component chain will trigger a parent render and two child renders. Remember that rendering will not actually update the DOM. Check out this previous video to understand what the rendering process actually does in React. There are a lot of optimized algorithms that will make sure that DOM updates will be performed only when and where needed. One final thing I want to briefly mention here is the option of managing more complex component state following the flux pattern and the state management library such as Recoil. This allows developers to easily centralize the app data and pass it around to components in a more friendlier manner. We'll discuss this in detail in one of the next videos in this series. Thank you for watching.